person. Maybe as people are coming in, I'll ask uh, really quickly. If you know what version of MySQL you're, you're running, uh, I guess first of all, who is using MySQL with their Jim Lynn skulls? Uh, who's using MySQL 5.5? 5 5.1? .5? 5 uh, and anyone using anything uh, before 5.0? And, and I think this is probably the most important question, who's using MySQL but doesn't really care or know what version it is? <laughs> I actually kind of like that, right? You, you shouldn't have to worry about that stuff too much. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the new features that we've released with 5.6. And um, actually we've announced as a release candidate with 5.6. And I know that not everyone immediately moves to the most recent release, but I think it's important for you to know what new features and what new products um, are out there as part of the database. So it gives you an idea of what you can leverage, so you're getting the most out of the database. And also when you're thinking about new projects, I think it gives people an idea of, uh, of different things they can do that they might not have thought about. So that's my, my plan here. I'm Lee Steigl. I've been with MySQL for seven years. So MySQL, when it was a independent company, and then part of Sun Microsystems, and now part of uh, and now part of Oracle. I when I joined the company, I was one of the. It was a minority of folks that were in the U.S. So it's a Swedish-based company. And I was also one of the very few people that worked from an office. Almost everyone works from home uh, to this day. In fact, there's a kind of a cool story about a uh, Christmas party our support team had. It was a IRC Christmas party. So everyone logged in on Christmas Eve, and people would think of different gifts to give somebody, and they would put a URL with a, a link. So a guy just had a new baby, and so they, uh, you know, there was a link to an outhouse, and he goes, I, I'm granting uh, Tom a, a new house for Christmas. And, and it just went on and on and on. And that's kind of just a little bit about the MySQL culture. Um, I actually still see that. So as soon as one, uh, somebody files a support issue, I can still log on to IRC, and I see all these people that I know are spread out throughout the world logging in, and, and the support issues getting assigned to someone so even though we've kind of come through the different companies, uh, that's still kind of the, uh, the philosophy and the culture. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Oracle's strategy and where MySQL fits in with Oracle. I'm also going to talk a bit about what's new with 5.6, some of our NoSQL implementation, and what's new with uh, PHP and MySQL. So what do these things have in common? So presidential ele uh, elections, Tim Tebow, Beyonce, and Japanese anime movies. Does anybody think they know? Well, I think if you thought about it a bit, so these are all the top five Twitter events. Um, the Japanese anime actually has the number one tweets per second, at 25,000 tweets per second. And I think it was Castles in the Sky, which I think is an old anime movie, was released in Japan. And that's what has the record for the number of tweets per second. Uh, the presidential elections had the most sustained tweets during the day that Twitter ever had. And that had 327,000 tweets per minute. Um, they reached about 10,000 from 8 to 9 p.m. And so it's Japanese anime, which edged out Beyonce's uh, at the MTV Music Awards. She leaked that she was pregnant. And then uh, that edged out Tim Tebow, uh, touchdown pass in overtime. Obviously not this year, but. Uh, <laughs> um, so what does this have to do with MySQL? Well, Twitter runs on MySQL. So every tweet goes into a MySQL database. And on the database side, I actually think these statistics are more interesting. So Jeremy Cole, the DBA for Twitter, uh, presented these at our users conference. And he just went to a random server in their infrastructure 
And I think they were checking hardware. Um, it wasn't a server that had an issue. And he did a show NODB status. And I thought this was interesting. So that server had been running for 212 days without issue, hadn't gone down, hadn't been restarted, had 127 billion queries that had executed on that single server. And it had executed 24.9 NODB rows read. Now, for the, me, that's the reason people use MySQL. It's just stable. It works. And I think there's not too many technologies where you can just rely on it for that long with that level of performance. So I mentioned Twitter. Uh, I think probably the other well-known company is Facebook. And Facebook actually interacts a lot with MySQL. They're a MySQL user, also a MySQL customer. And we have biweekly month uh, meetings with Facebook team, and they play a big part in setting the product direction. Also over, let's see, on your right, we are embedded in a lot of products because it's lightweight, can run on many operating systems. Uh, we're in a lot of hardware devices, F5 load balancers. Um, a lot of their management tools are running on MySQL. And then on the bottom, as far as cloud services, we're kind of the default database if you go to get a cloud instance. So the question I always get is, you know, why does Oracle invest in MySQL? Don't they already have a database? And in fact, Oracle has not just Oracle database, but they also have Times 10. They have Berkeley DB. But I think the, the big part of understanding why Oracle is interested in MySQL is if you look at the top 20 websites in the world for traffic, uh, 17 of those are running on MySQL as a key part of their infrastructure. Uh, the other three are Microsoft domains, so msn.com, and those are running on Microsoft SQL Server, obviously. And so when you look at Oracle, um, and Oracle's goal is to you know, be best of breed technology at every part of the stack, have everything tested together, working together, and also be best in breed in the different industries. And you can see with our online being in you know, 17 of the top 20 web companies, that that's kind of a, a gap and a unique thing where MySQL is the number one database for online companies. And that's really what drives the, the interest in the investment with Oracle. We are, uh, we came into Oracle as part of the, uh, we're in a group that reports to Edward Screven, who's the chief architect, architect who reports to Larry Ellison. And within that group, we support uh, Oracle Linux and also Oracle VM, which is their Zen hypervisor. So there's three core open source products that are all in this group included with MySQL. We came into Oracle in January of 2010. That's when the acquisition of Sun Microsystems closed. What many people don't realize is that Oracle actually owned a core component of MySQL uh, clear back 2005. So Oracle bought InnoBase, which is the company that does all the development on InnoDB. And they did that in 2005, seven years, uh, seven years ago. And then it wasn't until two years ago that there was the acquisition. And so the first year, we were actually able to come out with two major releases, our MySQL Cluster 7.1 and MySQL Database 5.5. And we were able to do that a lot because these teams were brought together. The NODB engineers were brought together with the rest of the engineering team. Uh, 2011. We did a lot of integration with MySQL tools. Uh, Oracle VM, there's some nice templates uh, for high availability. We integrated with Oracle Golden Gate, and we started work on MySQL 5.6 and Cluster 7.2. And Cluster 7.2 released this year, and then MySQL 5.6 is a release candidate. Now, usually a release candidate goes GA uh, within three months. But that all kind of depends on the feedback and the usage. So the release candidate is the last before it goes GA. 
So we don't have a hard date for when it's going to go GA, but that should give you an idea of, of where we're at here. I thought it was appropriate to launch into uh, talking about our 5.6 products by just talking about some of the tweets that we saw at, uh, after we announced the products at MySQL Connect conference. So replication, somebody tweeted global IDs, crash safe, multi-threading, GID is huge. I'll talk about what that means. Online DDL in 5.6 makes me want to go to the RC right now. And then this very technical post that says performance schema in 5.6 is totally cool. So we'll talk about what that means. I thought I'd present just the top five uh, features. So the number one, I think, is online operations. And this is online DDL. This is one of the big pain points for uh, DBAs, is that somebody, uh, you're running your application. You realize that a query is slow. But you need to create an index, but that has been an offline operation, or it would block. And with 5.6, that's no longer a blocking operation. In fact, prior to 5.6, we would rebuild the entire table to the table structure. Now, there's other items that are online, but I put the most common here, add index, drop index, drop column, add column, rename column. You could also reorder a column. And it does all these things without rebuilding the table and without blocking. Uh, the second item is performance. Now, many people report that you know, just going to 5.5, you know, just installing 5.5 itself gave you better performance. And you're going to see the same thing with 5.6. They've done a lot of uh, improvement. And it kind of depends on what hard hardware we're on. One of the issues that has uh, affected MySQL is that version 5.0, and really clear up until 2010, it really wasn't until 5.5 was released, we weren't using all the processors or all the cores on your system. And this says four CPUs, but we're really talking four cores with version 5.0. Uh, we might scale beyond four cores, but we weren't really using much beyond that. And with 5.1, halfway through the 5.1 release, we did a special version of NODB that you could enable. And that would take you up to, to 16 cores. But it really wasn't until 5.5 that we used all the processing power on your machine. And so that's why some people see a dramatic difference in plugging in 5.5. And as you know, you know if, if you look at you know, in 2008, 2009, you know, the default box you could buy, uh, you know, it might have four processors. But now you're looking at eight cores, at least, is kind of the minimum of what you can buy. So this is going to make a big difference. And it's something we've also done in 20, or for 5.6. Now, it's not just the processors, but we've also been adding a lot of background threads and being able to change the thread speeds for flushing to disk. So the other impact we're seeing is faster drives, flash drives, SSD. So we're making it so NODB can perform better in those environments, um, as well as take advantage of, of the RAM on your systems. Uh, just a quick benchmark. So this is 5.6 over 5.5. And this is a read and a write. And you can see substantial performance there with 5.6. And this is just doing optimal tuning on both systems. Actually, I did these in reverse order. So, so this one is read-only. Uh, the reason I bring up a read-only uh, slide is one of our goals is to make it so people that are running on my ISAM, uh, to get them to move over to NODB. We want folks using our transactional engine. And so we're putting a lot of work in to make sure that you're getting uh, the same level of read speed, and then, of course, dramatic performance on the read-write as well. So performance is kind of a, a very technical topic. Um, I didn't try to, I, I've just listed these out, some of the things we do here. A lot of it's at the NODB layer. 
But also on the MySQL side, we use a different memory allocator that's better for multi-threaded processes. And we also removed one of the contention bottlenecks with lock open. So I realize it's 920. And so talking about the optimizer at 920 on a Saturday morning <laughs> might be a little challenging, but I think let's look at it from a perspective of kind of our goals. And I'm going to talk about it kind of from the story of what benchmark we use uh, internally to, um, so you can understand kind of what the goals of the team. So the optimizer is the section of code that decides how a query should be processed. If it's a join between a customer and order, it decides you know, which has uh, fewer rows and how it should best join those two tables, uh, which indexes to use. So it's interesting because DBT is a benchmark uh, platform, and it's very similar to TPCH. Uh, DBT is kind of the open source version of that. And there's actually five benchmark tests. Uh, the third one is the one that we usually never did, because MySQL was excellent in all of them, but the third one. So the third one was for decision support systems, large data volumes, and complex queries. So this is what our optimizer team took on, is focusing on the more complex queries. And here is query 16. And you can see the main thing here is a subquery. Now, certainly, if you do a trace on your Joomla queries, you're going to see much deeper uh, queries than that. But as far as complexity, it's the in and the subquery that is a challenge for MySQL. Query 17 is even more of a challenge. In fact, it's so much a challenge that it took 40 days, we think, to execute Query 17. Nobody wanted to leave a machine running for 40 days. so. After a couple days, somebody just did the math, and they're like, well, we think it took about 40. Uh, now it's down to 6.8 seconds. Uh, essentially, what we did is the, it's materialized subquery. So we'll execute the subquery, put it in a buffer, put a hash key on it, and only executing it once instead of millions of times as what happened before. Uh, the prior query is actually a 25% improvement. Uh, it was actually executing relatively more quickly, but it's much faster. One other use case that we're seeing more of is very large data sets that won't fit in memory. So ideally, you want your working data set to get in RAM on your machine. Everything runs quickly. Uh, data sets are getting extraordinarily large, and so what we're seeing is disk-bound uh, queries, and it, it's the I.O. to disk that's the main overhead. What we've implemented here is that uh, those are the process batch key access. Uh, so normally when you do a join, we do a bunch of loops. We go to the customer table, we get the first row, go to the order table, get the next one, and we're going to indexes, but it's looping. And then when it goes to get the data from disk, it does random lookups instead of looking it up sequentially. And random reads from disk um, are slow. So what this does is it grabs it in a batch, sends it to the storage engine, matches up the keys, but then it sorts it in natural order. So it's doing a sequential search on that table. And as you can see from the benchmark, uh, it is substantially faster. So the, the orange there is with the batch key access, and you want faster performance, which is the, the lower bar. Now, there's a couple exceptions there, where due to the order of the keys, um, the sorting took extra overhead. And also, this is something you'd want to do if you can't fit everything in memory. So this is something you can enable dynamically. So again, the main point is I want you to realize that we're investing a lot of resources in making MySQL work better for different use cases than just the online applications. We're working to make sure it can optimize you know, tables with joins with more than 25 tables involved. Uh, there's also something called postpone materialization. So if you're doing an explain or if it doesn't need to actually put together a subquery, it doesn't. I think. Uh, 
From your perspective, you'll see some benefits just built in. We've optimized uh, limit clauses. That's one of the things paging systems do. You show up 10 records, and then you do the next 10. Uh, so that's optimized and index condition pushed down so we can solve some queries without actually going to disk at all. Uh, so the next part is performance schema. MySQL has always been lightweight, it's fast, but never, no one ever took the time to put the instrumentation into the system to really see what's going on. If you've worked with Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle databases, you'll know that there are just enormous amount of statistics you can get about how the database is executing. And so that's the work we're putting in. You want to know things like which queries are most resource intensive, which tables have the most contention, and also, you want to know which users are killing your system um, and which queries that need to be optimized. And in the past, the way to get this was to turn on query logging or slow query logs or logging query without indexes. But this had some overhead. It was a little challenging to do. Um, uh, you know, not all of these things are dynamic. And you didn't have necessarily the, the, the detail you wanted for that analysis. So in 5.6, you can enable performance schema, which is a set of tables that you'll find in your MySQL directory. And you can query those just like regular tables. And it has very fine-grained instrumentation. And you can turn these on and off at runtime. And you can decide exactly what and how you want it collected to minimize your overhead. Here's an example for what you can get. So most common queries, slowest queries, queries not using index, all of those things you'll be able to query from a table. And then you can also just get a real-time view into the database, what's running right now. And then here's where it gets interesting. So files by file I.O. So this is the level you've never been able to get at before. You know, exactly which files are having the most contention. <coughs> And this one's pretty important. So I mean, there's all these great statistics in MySQL, like you're using too many temporary tables, but then it never tells you which queries are causing that. Right? So then you got to, it's kind of like, well, you're sick. You got a problem, but we're not sure what's wrong. Well, now we can get at which queries are using creating those temporary tables. So that's a quick look at the performance schema. Very powerful. I think it's going to be very useful. Uh, quick question, how many folks use replication? Yeah, quite a few. Great. Well, I would say that 90% of MySQL users are using replication. It's very simple, very easy uh, to set up. But if you've used replication, you know it has I always say there's a good side, a bad side. It's simple, it's easy. The bad side is it's simple, it's easy in that if there's a crash, sometimes it's hard to recover. It starts in the wrong spot. Uh, and also, your slave servers can lag. We have introduced in 5.6 a multi-threaded slave. And this is used to address lag. Now, with 5.6, it's the first step. Uh, what we've had to do is, of course, you know, your Joomla application um, and MySQL itself is multi-threaded, many users all doing ups updates at one time, but the slave has been single-threaded to make sure records are applied in the right order. Uh, with 5.6, we've made it so there's uh, one thread per schema. So if you're hosting many databases on one MySQL instance, they'll each use a thread. And then moving forward, we're, we're working to expand that uh, internally, so there'll be more threads on a single schema. If you enable the binary log, which is uh, important for point in time recovery, but it's also important for replication, the binary logging is much faster. So one of the tests the R&D team told me uh, they did that 5.6 was faster with binary logging enabled than 5.5 was without it enabled, which was a testament to this functionality where they've made it more efficient committing to disk and also just other performance improvements with 5.6. If you use replication, uh, inevitably a server crashes. And then 
you should be able to start it back up, and replication should start up where it left off. But one of the, one of the issues is in the, the top right here, is our relay logs that kept track of where replication was on a slave to a master, those logs were on a, a text file. And so even though you're committing transactional data, the replication logs weren't actually transactional. And that's changed in 5.6. So now it's all transactional. We call it this cratch safe slaves. The other thing is if you had a crash, it was hard to identify which updates made it to which server. Uh, we've added a global transaction ID, so now we know uh, it, there's a unique ID going throughout the replication chain, so you can know exactly uh, which server has which update. And this is kind of exciting because this is the foundation for some new functionality that you're going to see in the years coming, in that this allows us, one, to automate failover from a master to a slave. It also starts us moving where we can do master masters and send writes to different masters and uh, not deal with all the challenges that involves. And it also allows us to do some things in the future like uh, some auto sharding where we can um, do a replication chain and break out writes to different servers. So this is the foundation for some of those things. If you, um, well I guess I should ask, who's used MySQL Workbench? Okay, well I always say we, we should have renamed the tool because we had a version of MySQL Workbench five years ago and it was pretty clunky. But they rewrote it, and MySQL Workbench uh, allows you to do ER diagram. You can just hook it to your database, and it brings in all your objects visually, and it's a very nice tool. Uh, included with it is some utilities to automate failover from a master to a slave. And this all hinges on this 5.6 functionality with the global transaction ID. Uh, just a couple quick uh, notes on other features. So that was my top five. This is my way to squeeze in two more. So now we have full text search indexes within ODB. So you've always been able to do full text searches, but it hasn't been optimized. Uh, so now you can build an index on you know, your, your bar char field, your text field, and you can do very fast searches. Also transportable table spaces. So if you want to move a database from one server to another, you no longer have to dump it to a text file and reload it. Uh, you can just export it and you can move it across as a, as a binary uh, table and load it back in. I wanted to talk a little bit about some work we're doing on the NoSQL side of the business. Uh, we look at NoSQL and, and SQL solutions as using the right tool for the job. Uh, but we also realize that there's a lot of times people would like to use NoSQL to MySQL. They would like the data to be transactional. They would like to use NoSQL key value lookups, not to find a schema. But they would also like the accounting department to be able to hook up a report and run their SQL reports. So this is kind of the, you know, the tact we're taking at it is to try to identify the value of NoSQL solutions and apply it to MySQL. Most of our work to date has been with MySQL cluster. And MySQL cluster is different than standard MySQL. Usually MySQL is running on the same machine as your data. With MySQL cluster, the data is actually on separate physical nodes and it does automatic sharding of your data, and it writes all data to two physical machines. With our most, uh, our beta we just announced with Cluster is we are implementing cascading updates, cascading deletes, uh, referential integrity with Cluster. And that's gonna move Cluster um, out into more use cases, and probably something that you'll see uh, more, you know, you'll see folks on Joomla starting to use Cluster as, as that functionality moves out. But in this case, we have the auto sharding, but then we also have a NoSQL front end in that you can use memcache, and also in the beta we just announced um, node.js access directly to the data nodes. 
And it's extremely fast because you're not going through any parsing. But the nice thing is, is you can still put MySQL in front and other users can go ahead and run their queries. On the standard MySQL, so not the cluster, but the, the standard MySQL that everyone's running and that you, you install to run Joomla, uh, we also offer a NoSQL interface with 5.6, and that's view uh, through memcache, which is a key value access that many people are familiar with. Uh, it's very nice, and again, you get incredible performance. Uh, just a disclaimer, I'm not a PHP programmer before I get into here, but let me give you some updates on PHP because I think it's useful uh, for you. So this is kind of the standard architecture, so Joomla on top, and then you have your three PHP extensions. Uh, we always recommend the, the middle one, MySQLi, because that gives you the most flexibility with MySQL. Uh, the one on the left, the uh, ext MySQL, that's really for MySQL 4x. And then the, the PDO is very good. It's supported, but that's more of the generic implementation if you're moving you know, between different databases and doesn't necessarily have any specific MySQL functionality. But either MySQL I or PDO um, are good solutions. But a level you've probably never looked at is the lib MySQL. So these drivers actually make a call to our C library, and then the C library makes the call to the MySQL database. And if you've ever gone to install PHP and it gave you a headache through the install, it's because of this implementation, uh, where it's calling that C library that depends on other libraries where you actually need MySQL installed on that machine, even though maybe you don't actually need MySQL on that machine. So we have a native driver, which is MySQL ND. It ships with uh, PHP 5.3, and it's the default with PHP 5.4. It is a lot faster. So some people have reported dramatic improvement. And the nice thing about this is it's nothing that needs to change on the Joomla side. Um, it, it's all underneath the covers, MySQL I connecting down to the database server. And the native driver, it's faster. It's, a PH, it's still a C library, but it's developed as a PHP extension. So it's going to be tremendously faster. Um, in fact, using the other library, we actually read all rows into memory twice. And so you can imagine by eliminating that, you're going to get a lot better performance. And it's going to be a lot easier to install. Not going to give you all those headaches when you go to compile PHP. And it actually resolves a, a licensing issue. So I think the other library was GPL, and PHP is PHP license. And uh, this driver is actually developed uh, by PHP, our engineers working through the PHP project. Uh, and I, I listed this just so I, I didn't get confused. So 5.3 MySQL ND is supported but when you run the configure to compile PHP, you need to specify that line that says with MySQL I equals MySQL ND. Uh, when you move to PHP 5.4, and if you just say with MySQL I or with MySQL PDO, it's just going to use MySQL ND uh, by default. And it's going to make a tremendous difference. Uh, performance improvement uh, without changing anything on your application side. So I think you know, if you are looking at moving to a new version of PHP, this is one of the things you should, especially if you're just going to 5.3, you need to intentionally use this MySQL ND. And this opens up a lot of exciting things. So they have, oh, they have um, that, that first box here. So look at the dotted line boxes. So they have plugins to MySQL ND. And again, this is underneath the covers, so it's nothing you should have to worry about. But one of those plugins is MySQL MS. Sorry about my formatting there, but that is for master-slave. Uh, MySQL QC for query cache. 
uh, MySQL UH for user handler and MySQL MUX for multiplexing, which as far as I can tell is PHP connection pooling. So you can install these MySQL ND, and then you can also install these extra components. And you'll see these in your php.ini file. I'm just going to talk about the MySQL MS, because it's master-slave. And one of the ways people scale is they set up replication, and they'll set up a master server to 20 slave servers. And then they'll spread their reads across those slave servers. Uh, YouTube uses this. A, a ton because so many people go to YouTube that never post to YouTube, right? So they can just round robin across all those read slave servers. Uh, but the challenge is people had to do that programmatically. Well, with these plugins, we've made it so it will intercept the statements and it'll say, okay, this is a select statement, let's send those to the slaves. This is a write sa statement, this, we'll send that to the master. It has a lot of intelligence built in, so it can also check to uh, make sure that slave isn't behind. And also, if it does an insert and then a select all from the same thread, it will send it all to the master, because we're assuming it's a, uh, you know, you're inserting into a form and then sending it back to the user. So pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, and these are, uh, I mean, these are released and out there, and really a lot of momentum building around these tools. I threw in this slide because I wanted you to know that everything I showed you so far today is in the core MySQL server. So it's in the open source community server, the GPL version that's available to everyone. So all those five, six features, uh, the PH plugin, those are free open source tools, and Oracle continues the commitment for that core server to be available to everyone. Now, on the outside, these are services we offer on a subscription basis. So auditing, uh, single sign-on authentication, thread pooling, um, and all that's included if you get a support subscription. So the, just, I just wanted to make the point, though, that you know, Oracle, from what I've seen, they actually err on the side of putting a feature in that core version. They're very careful about making sure that it stays open source and the features are available to everyone uh, as far as core functionality. So we talked just a little bit about MySQL strategies, talked about new things in 5.6, uh, SQL and no SQL, and what's new in PHP. Uh, so that's it for my presentation. Thanks. And I don't know if we take questions now or if you just want to catch me after the session. I guess I'll ask us, is there questions? Yeah. Is it possible, advisable, safe, to just upgrade two or three slaves out of a dozen or so uh, to test those features? So we've got a pair of five, five masters or five, one masters. Can you just swap out a few slaves to see the performance gain? Uh, yeah, so you're not testing uh, replication features, but you just want to test the performance gains. Right, right. So, so yeah, that's the way to test it out is to upgrade the slave. So, so yes, you can do that. Um, and I, the general advice is not to do it the other way around. So the master is not ahead of the slave. Yep. Yeah, that's a great way to try it out and a great way just to upgrade. Any other questions? What, what can you tell me about Joomla version compatibility with SQL 5.6? I need to defer to other people. So the question was, what can I tell you about Joomla compatibility in regards to 5.6? Um, I'm guessing that there hasn't been any testing done just because it's a new feature. Does anyone else have a better answer than that? I can say that I installed it on top of 5.6, but um, I can't say that I pounded on anything or did anything beyond the basics. Anything else? Well, great. Oh, I'm sorry. Question back there.